uh, when electricity went to alternating current, it was necessary to get a, diff a, a faster revolving uh, generator than was necessary in the, uh, in the early direct current. And so the idea of driving this generator with a steam turbine, which also produced more power as well as higher speed, was one of these ideas whose time had come. So a, a number of people uh, went to work on steam turbines. Now, steam turbines had been worked on for 100 years. I mean, almost from the time of James Watt, people realized you know, they, they knew about water wheels and turbines. So it was an old idea, and many people were working on it. So there was nothing uh, new about the idea. What w the question was, how could you make it work? And there were two or three basic ways to make it work. And uh, as typical in invention, they were all uh, applied at this time, not because nobody had thought of these ideas before, but because you now there was a need. Uh, the idea of necessity of the mother of invention is perhaps not the whole story, but it certainly was a story in this case. There was a need for a high speed uh, and high power thing. So uh, s there was a man named Parsons in England who I think was, should be given the credit, not because he was the first one who did this, but he w really pushed this idea and conquered a lot of the engineering difficulties and pretty much got out ahead of the pack. Curtis, as I understand it, was a patent attorney by background. Uh, he obviously had engineering training. And being aware probably of what Parsons was doing, there were also people in Germany who were doing this and no doubt many other people in other countries that I don't even know about. He looked at the, this question and, and picked one of the two or three basic ways of doing it. And I, I really don't understand the technology that well, but he picked a different way of Parsons. It has to do with how, you, how the steam expands in the turbine and whether you use the blades to determine like, like an airplane wing or whether you use it more like a, a, uh, something like a water wheel where the, the, the steam impacts. And so he picked a different route than Parsons. Again, with his patents knowledge, attorney's knowledge, that he would probably be more successful. Well, this uh, I've read some of the reports that Steinmetz and others, I've never read the reports that Rice made going down to view this. And again, it wasn't a question of discovering something out of nowhere, but looking at these ideas. And, and people were quite dubious that his particular approach would be better than Parsons, which was out ahead of the pack. In spite of their doubt, uh, and partly because Curtis went around New York City and had a certain amount of work done himself to do demonstrations to overcome their doubt, uh, GE's doubt was overcome and they offered him the opportunity to come up to Schenectady and try his ideas out on a somewhat larger scale, which initially was quite unsuccessful. When we read about these rockets, private rockets that crash, the first four times and, and then succeed on the fifth or sixth. That was what was happening with these turbines. The turbine was extremely difficult as an engineering challenge. And one, I think, where Rice and others, particularly someone like Rice should be given credit, is sticking with this idea and assigning some very smart people, such as the great engineer William Leroy Emmett, to work with Curtis on this and to pull it through. So I would say it was not a question of a great new idea. It was not even a question of uh, Curtis being someone who, who was so doubtful that it took a tremendous amount of genius that, to recognize what he was doing. But this idea of sticking with it over a long period of time was what I think Rice and others in GE should be credit for. Now, one would take away a little bit of the credit because it was necessary for them to do this. Uh, Westinghouse had negotiated with Parsons to get his turbine. It was clear the turbine were coming in, so GE had to get a turbine somewhere. So uh, I would say it was more a case of them picking their Curtis as the one which had the best combination of succeeding and giving them a proprietary position that they could use in, in contest with Westinghouse and other rivals. So I so apologize for making it sound complicated, but it was an astonished and complicated story, the development of the steam turbine, one of the great success stories in science and technology, which is almost unknown to the world. But every day that we turn on a light, we're <laughs> getting the benefit of it.